Life in lockdown. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you this evening. Um, hope you're having a nice time and all the rest of it. Uh, I think we're up there. Let me just make sure everything's actually running and I am reaching the great outside world. It looks like we might be. This is looking promising. OK, I have the sunglasses of doubt on because a live occasion is never without its little kind of unexpected flaws. Let's see how we get on today. Oh, yep, I'm coming out of there. So that's great. Good. I tell you what, let's be confident. Let's cast off the sunglasses of doubt and move into a new phase of um, warm enthusiasm. Right, ladies and gentlemen, what are we looking at today? Um, the first thing we're going to be looking at um, is a quick look at the impact of um, the ghastly COVID thing on uh, media composers, which is quite significant. And there is something to say about that. Um, then we will be uh, looking at a sl slightly new approach um, to uh, how to build a template and I'm, something I've been looking at and I think uh, might be worth sharing with you. And then I thought, actually, well, we better get on with writing a bit of music, shouldn't we? So um, we'll have a little look at uh, two things. Albion One, which is an old favourite, and I'm sure many of you out there have got it. Um, Happy Easter to you. I can see lots of people checking in from all over the world. Uh, we got, um, was it Bernardo from Brazil? Yes, Bernardo from Brazil. Um, and we got uh, Quintora from Spain, and we have Tom Prince. Hi, Tom. He's one of our master students. Um, hello, Davy from Switzerland. Oh, yeah, lots of people out there. So look, um, the the business with the the COVID thing. There is no good news now. The um, what's happened, as you're probably aware, is vast amounts of film and television and game production have been stopped, particularly film production and live action um, television. Um, and this is going to have an absolutely catastrophic effect because it's going to mean that about four or five months of production are gone because it only takes about an hour to shut a production down. But think about the complexity of trying to get it back up and running again because you then have to rebook all the facilities and all the people, many of which are already committed to other things. So there was quite a lot of production which may well uh, end up being cancelled rather than postponed, um, which is very, very bad news for everybody involved in the whole industry. There is a massive fall, shortfall of um, advertising revenue. ITV in the UK says that for every 1% drop, they lose £17 million. Um, Channel 4's production budget has been cut by £150 million. So this is just in the UK, and I would imagine that that's being replicated right across Europe and the rest of the world. Um, so what does this mean for the likes of you and I? Um, the only, well, upside is for those uh, composers uh, like me who've got quite a lot of pro uh, production already out there, they're likely to see some of that uh, extended, but, you know, because there, there is going to be what broadcasters are talking about as the autumn Armageddon when it comes to um, their schedules, because that's traditionally when they roll out all their new stuff. Um, and there isn't going to be the new stuff to roll out. It's even going to have... Uh, an impact on the 2021 um, tentpole um, major film releases, things like The Batman, which is being, um, which is only got 25% of the film shot, and then it had to close down. That's not going to make the middle of uh, 2021. So there's a lot. There's going to be a huge hole where there traditionally would be new production. Um, now, if composers get double booked, that does mean that there's a possible opportunity for new guys like you, because they'll be reaching out and say, "Oh my lord, who can we get?" We'll, you know, and then so there will be amidst all this sort of jiggling around a certain amount of opportunity. What you really, what I think, what I think most of us have got to do is to look at any kind of turbulent period of time like this does create opportunities. It will come in unexpected ways. It'll come in unexpected um, directions, but you have to be ready for that. And um, when you get the chance to uh, pitch. Um, it's going to be in new directions, new styles, uh, new things will come up. And this for new people is a, is a good thing. Um, so I would stay tuned, keep your ear to the ground and watch what's going on because you need, you're going to need to jump on it quickly. I know there was a few people out there saying, um, there was a good question actually asked earlier about um, is, it, <clears throat> is the whole business a lot more competitive than it was 10, 15 years ago? Um, sort of. Um, I think... 
what the, uh, the the biggest change is, as you correctly point out, the actual the, you know the price of technology, the barrier to entry is much lower. That does not mean there is more talent around. Um, so I think it means that people are uh, prioritizing talent and distinctiveness above all, um, um, way more than just pure run-of-the-mill competence of being able to do the job. So this is why. Uh, we spend an enormous amount of time with our um, uh, master students, getting them to think sort of out <laughs> horrible phrase, cliche phrase outside the box, but trying to get them to think about how they might approach things differently, develop a, a, a really distinctive voice of their own so they stand out from the crowd. That's really... So in many respects, what you're dealing with here is greater opportunity and less, because what most people, I think, feel if, when they're trying to find composers is there's a just... There is actually a lack of real distinctive quality. Um, there's just an awful lot of people who sound the same. Um, so if you can manage to stand out for the crowd and get yourself discovered, you are definitely um, going to do well. So that's, um, you know, that's my take on this for the time being. There's never a better time to you know, spend this time upskilling yourself um, because what you do find as time goes by, and this actually reflects on the... the, the uh, template thing which I'm about to talk about um, is you know when you get your opportunity that is not the moment to be investing in new gear and learning new skills you know now is the time to do that when you have um, a, you know time time is on your side so to speak right now moving on I mean I will come back to that because I'm sure some of uh, uh, some of you will have questions and comments on that which we will can return to in a bit but I want to move on at speed to look at shum, uh, potentially a new way of putting um, uh, templates together. I tell you what, okay, as many of you know from those who've seen my video, I do have in an enormous template. I mean, ridiculous. Uh, 1,200 tracks. And that's a cut down one from where it was. You know, each articulation has a separate line. This is brilliant in many respects it's very very good if i need to jump on a film or television project and i want to produce a big uh sound there is my orchestra there are all my percussion there's everything's laid out everything's all rooted i can just you know it's good to go and it works with vienna symphonic library uh, i mean ensemble pro and all the rest of it the downside is um it is isn't the most efficient use of resources um, this machine I'm working on uh, and streaming from is a 14-core i7 PC with 128 gigabytes of RAM. Does this man know absolutely no self-control? None whatsoever. Um, so this is a huge machine, and it does very well, and it can handle all this stuff. 80 gigabytes of samples I load up. Um, Hello, Zigskel from oh no, from Russia. Zigskel, wow, wombat. What is Easter? Ha, huh, indeed. Okay, there's lots of uh, lots of stuff going on here in the chat. Okay, jolly good. Long as people are being nice to it. Graham Casey, nice to see you. Okay, uh, where was I? Right. So, okay. So why don't the trouble is, as you will see from a lot of the videos I do, a lot of the time I just go create new template, drop some instruments in, off we go. What's wrong with that? Well, <clears throat> for just doing quick little bits like that, nothing, absolutely nothing. Knock yourself out, go for it. However, when you get to the point where you actually have to deliver this stuff, particularly in a commercial environment, to a film and television company, they're going to want all kinds of stuff which you probably won't have. Like, um, they'll want stems and they'll want um, all kinds, they want all the reverb separated out. So they'll want, you know, all the strings and uh, the keyboards maybe on stem A and then they'll want, uh, you know, woodwind and brass on stem B. And, and it's quite complicated. So what I have decided to do is to build what is essentially a sort of modular version of um, my template. So up the top here, there we go. It comes complete with sound effects like that. Um, 
Um, I have the normal stuff, like um, I have the markers and all the rest of it. I have a little folder where I can put all the videos and, and where we keep the film audio, um, so the dialogue and things like that. Um, but then it has all the um, stems, so it's just got five, uh, no, six, six, yeah, six here. Um, so all the things I need um, to be able to output the thing are there. I also have set up um, all the effects because if you have six, um, if you have six uh, stems, you need six reverbs. So I tend to, I've got two reverbs which I use all the time. Lexicon, um, which is a sort of a, a, a really wonderful um, uh, reproduction of their. Um, what was it? Well, the sort of lexicon 480, 960, 300, that kind of sound, which had a really swooshy kind of shh. Um, you'll hear it in a minute. It's really lovely. Um, and Spaces, Spaces, which is um, from East West. I really like Spaces and, as an algorithmic, uh, as a, a, a sampled reverb, it, you know, for those kind of as, it's a very musical one. I, I prefer it, frankly, to Altiverb, though I know lots of people think Altiverb is absolutely the bee's knees. It's whatever works for you. And also, within Logic and Cubase, you know, they've got fantastic um, algorithmic and um, sampled reverb. For those, uh, there's two different types of reverb. Algorithmic is basically synthesized reverb. That's the lexicon one. So it has very little impact on your CPU. Uh, you can run it on a laptop really easily and you can make it run, you know, if you want 30 seconds of reverb, knock yourself out. You can have it. Yeah, you just turn the button up. Okay, sampled reverb. <clears throat> In the old days, they used to go into a, a space, fire a starting pistol, record it, and then that gave them a fingerprint, a sort of digital fingerprint for the space. Then you take what that thing, which is called an impulse response, and then you feed your music through it, and it sounds like it's in the room. Fantastic idea, isn't it? Um, now, unfortunately, that is a lot more CPU intensive. So if you run lots of those, your computer is suddenly going to go, what? What do you think I am? I'm not doing that. I'm going home. And suddenly the whole thing will crash around your ears, and it's just the most ghastly experience. So you need to be, you can't run a reverb on every single channel, otherwise your whole thing would just grind to a halt and it would be horrible. So you end up running, oh, this is a very long way of explaining why you end up running six, six I run six spaces and six uh, of those. Now, here comes the bit which I quite like. What I've started doing, okay, I said to myself, why do, oh, the other thing which, the other slight problem with big templates is you're always loading up basically the same sounds and you know although I may be loading 1200 tracks or 80 gigabytes or whatever actually that's not all the sounds I've got I've got thousands of sounds and I'm not using them all I'm not creating a new distinctive palette for each uh, each uh, project I do and maybe I should so um you know Oh yeah, your computer was just starting to let out smoke. I know that experience. I really, really, really do. So I thought this is the way maybe I'm going to approach this. So I've got um, my standard list of group tracks so that I can, these are where I'm going to root all the outputs from my instruments. So I've got, I don't know what I've got, 20 or 30 of them. You know, everything from strings to percussion to harp and all the rest of it. So it goes instrument, group track, stem, stereo mix. Uh, and that's how most people's, uh, most working people's templates work. So here we go. Here is my little instrument. I've created a folder with a single instance of uh, contact in it, contact six. Um, the nice thing about contact six is, welcome to the party, contact six. Um, am I getting, is my little face getting in the way of that? Not much, okay. Um, you don't have to anymore decide before you start the thing up how whether it's going to have multiple outputs or not. You can just create them on the fly. So I've got eight or nine outputs already set up. So as we add additional instruments, as I'll show you in a minute, you can route them to separate outputs. That's all there, and I've got MIDI channels set up. So everything I need is a sort of in this little folder. So if I just wanted, for example, to have all my flutes uh, or a selection of woodwind 
I could have them all with their own MIDI channel, their own output, and all in this folder. And if I want then to create a new one, all I do is duplicate the whole folder. Also, because this is Cubase 10.5, and Logic does this as well, <coughs> I can import these setups into other projects. Uh, with those who are more experienced at the world of Logic, and I'm sure many of you are, um, will probably say, yeah, you can do this with, is it track stacks or folder track? Anyway, there's a thing. There's a thing in Logic. It's a good thing. And you can import it from one project to another, and it's really super. Now you can do the same in, in uh, Cubase, and that's really super too. So I thought, actually, this is probably a better way to go. Now, <clears throat> it's going to take longer because you are going to have to go out there, choose the sounds, make it all work, bring the whole thing together and all the rest of it. But you're not then going to have to go, oh, my Lord, I've got to recreate all these buses and everything else because it's all there. So this is my, I'm, you know, this is my little experiment. I haven't worked this through yet. Um, I did do, uh, I was, um, a project I can't really talk about yet, which um, I tried this with some of the, on some of the cues, and I really like it. Uh, and it does help move towards a more original sound, I think. Track stacks, thank you, Graham Metcalf. Yeah, so I think it's horses for courses. And sometimes just pff, clean template, nothing in it, let's get going. Sometimes, oh, no, I definitely need boom, the full, my big orchestral template. But sometimes I think this little kind of half and half might be quite a good way to go. What do you think? Is this something which might appeal to you as a way of working? Who knows? We'll find out. Right. Um, let's have a little look at one or two of these. A palette needs the full version of contact. Yes, it does. Um, we did a ch we actually touched on palette the other day. Uh, I did a Celtic fiddle. The nice people from Red Room Audio. Uh, you know, I really like people who are smaller producers who are, you know, getting their act together and going for it. And Red Room do some really great stuff. So if you haven't checked them out, check them out because it's really good. I, while I was sort of looking, some people asked. I said, they said, will you go and look at Palette? And so, yes, I will. And we did it and it was great. Um, it, the thing about the full version of Contact, um, the, if you have, if, now as far as I understand it, as long as the, if the um, uh, sample producer um, buys a specific license from uh, Native Instruments, they can then distribute their samples with the contact player. And all the authorization goes through the Native Interest, uh, Native Interest, <laughs> Native Instruments access, and it all works really well. Um, but it obviously costs the sample producer money and the sort of security and the copy protection is all built into the native instruments thing. If you uh, rely just on the full version of Contact, you don't need that license and you can load any old stuff into it. Um, if so, they, for example, um, the there's lots and lots of the 8DO stuff is not Contact Player. It needs the full version of Contact. To be honest, if you're only going to buy one sampler, <clears throat> one piece of software, Contact is a pretty good choice because it's bomb-proof. It's the best, uh, it's the best uh, sampling software there is at the moment. And uh, if you're going to take this kind of little journey seriously, it also opens up a whole raft of free stuff which um, doesn't use the contact player. So um, it's definitely, definitely worth considering. Um, contact fold is 400. Yeah, um, you need to keep your eye on the native instrument stuff because there's, there's a whole load of, there are sort of bundles and there are um, discounts and all kinds of, yeah, it's a big ask. It's a big ask. Um, so, okay, Tom Smith, you couldn't understand contact. I am thinking of doing a quick sort of intro to contact, actually, because I know a number of people suffer from, you go, oh, what's this? I don't understand this whole thing going on in front of me. Okay, so look, let's get going and look at one or two bits and pieces. So, okay, what I thought we'd do, um, I was going to look at this Celtic fiddle thing, because I rather like it. I think... Uh, it's uh, why did I? I just had it up and then I moved it out of the way. Did you notice the way I seamlessly did that? Nonsense, wasn't it? Okay, right. Let's see what's what. 
Okay, it consists of two things. You have these phrases. Ooh, that was a bit like. Is that me or is it a bit loud? It is a bit loud, isn't it? How cool is this? Get out your stuff and start dancing. Yeah, bat battery save is a good thing. If you've got 48,000 uh, libraries, battery save becomes uh, not really uh, tenable. Unless you've got, just got the time to... It is really good because it does speed up. If you battery save, it really does speed up uh, loading. Equally, if you've got all this kind of you know, nonsensical amounts of stuff, whoop, battery saving, all that could take a lifetime. Okay, so look... So look, what we've got going here, I've loaded up the fiddle phrases and effects because I think they're rather fun. Etc. <laughs> Doesn't it just make you happy? I mean, it makes me happy. Uh, you know. Hoda, yeah, they've got three actually. They've got the Celtic fiddle. They've got uh, the... What is it? Is it the Appalachian one? Um, they've, got a, they've got other... Hang on, let me just have a little look, see if I can find it for you. Uh, Traveller series, bluegrass fiddle. Here we go. Let's have a bit of bluegrass fiddle. Uh, instruments. There we go. So what they do is they have um, they have the phrases and effects, and then they have the sampled version. Uh, the sampled version I find harder to get. get I'll show you. Okay. Well, let's just load it up, shall we? Yeah. Vroom. You've really got to work at this to... It sounds great, but actually, if they've got the phrases there, I think pro the phrases are always with something like this going to sound more idiomatic. There is a problem, obviously, with phrases because... Uh... <laughs> uh, what have we got? Okay, d shop one. Where's my thing? Where's my bits gone? Intros. Okay, intros. Here we are up here. <laughs> Various phrases A sharp one. Ready for this? Here we go. Oh, lordy lord. I could have a lot of fun doing this. Anyway, look, you see the way this works. Um, there are lots and lots and lots of... Uh, things going on here and they got the um Barons and bones and there's another what's the other one with the uh, here's all their stuff here's the red room stuff uh travelers bluegrass uh celtic field celtic field one I, I was i was looking at today because i thought it was fun and i thought we might try combining it with some other bits and pieces and see one or two of the uh bits and you know ways in which you can do this so look what i've done actually is i bounced out here it is i bounced out a, um, a little phrase okay now how are we gonna i was gonna try and combine it with something else i had another idea i yeah genuinely it's it's a two idea day falls on the floor with shock Okay, so um, what I did, I'll take my headphones off for a minute. Ta what I did, I got um, a guitar, this venerable um, Epiphone Dot, which is a sort of E355 copy, um, and uh, a violin bow, and I had a bit of a go with all this, and recorded it in because I didn't think that was going to work live, frankly, because I wanted to have a go at trying to make a bit of a sound of it. Now, all that turns out to be, <laughs> I know, two ideas. My brain explodes if I have one and a half ideas. So what I was doing today, I have no idea. So anyway, so, so I put this stuff in and I quite like it. The only trouble is it's in a different key, but uh, so I haven't put any effects or anything on that yet. This is literally just straight straight out the back of the machine and I quite I was going to add some uh where is it gone 
Hang on, let's get me. Where's he going? Here we go. Took me a while to get. You know, this sort of. I quite like the more rhythmic stuff, this sort of thing. This. And then what else did I do? So I was trying to bow some, some chords. That worked quite well. Um, I could spend many hours doing this, frankly. But I thought, actually, what I'd do is I would chop one or two of these bits and pieces up first. And this came out quite well, this little sound here. So I thought I might try and work with this. It goes... So it's got, a, it's got a little bouncy thing going for it. Now, what I then thought I might do is add, put it... If I stuck it through... Um, uh, Heterophy? Uh, check out Sigur Ross. Okay. There's, there's nothing new under the sun, is there? Of course not. Now, the only problem is this is in E. And my little guitar, my little violin thing up here is, de is in D or something. So what I think I might have to do... I love Sigur Ross. I, th I mean, some of their stuff is really, really good. Didn't they make up their own language or something? Now, what I then thought I might end up having to do is to... Um, there we go. So that's just got um, a guitar amp effect on it and... Um, I then thought, actually, I may need to pitch this down. So rather than doing it the sensible way, I just do it in real time. Take it down two, two semitones. It's all right. Doesn't sound too bad. Now, what I could do, what might work, if I duplicate this track, and then um, I've got three of these, as you can see. So if I offset them, so I put this one, so it's going to be a different one. Well, that's quite a good sound. It's traditional with guitars, pan them left and right. I could live with this, this is all right. Uh, what else am I going to do? Take this one. I've got to put this one somewhere. But um, this is really pushing the envelope a bit because there's every chance that it's all going to crash if I do this. <laughs> it's, if I'm trying to cut things on the... Yes! I me, I did it. I succeeded in, instantaneously in crashing. Okay. I, that, I shouldn't really be surprised. When I'm trying to edit on the fly with my uh, extremely hefty... Uh, transmission software chewing up my CPU at the same time. Fortunately, I think I remember <laughs> I think I remember to save it. <laughs> oh dear, never mind, such is life. Anyway, it's reloading now. Uh, to, uh, let's try one of these. Let's, let's remind you to do this. Look, let, this, this is a good opportunity. Um, if it's, this is the kind of thing that you like, why don't you remember to subscribe? <laughs> And you can watch me crashing my software as often as I like. No, I'm, here we go. I'm just, I'm just going to open. I'm just opening it up in the background. Okay. Uh, to, so, uh, backup project. New in this. Yes, I'll go with that. Okay. So it's doing its thing. It'll take a couple of minutes to load up, but that'll be all right. Uh, um, so anyway, so look. <laughs> do I use FL Studio? Yes, I do. I'm learning to use FL Studio. I don't really know it yet um, because it's a very, very different. Um, um, paradigm to all the others. Um, it's really good. It's really good, actually. And I think it's got a lot of potential, particularly um, for sound design and things like that. I think that might be quite fun. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to learn it, but it does take a, you know, those of you who are our regular um, FL Studio users will know that it is actually quite different and it takes a bit of getting used to. So, oh, look, look, I've got all these little, look, look at all these little subscribe things which Hugh, the video editor, has put together for me. And I'm just able to play them in. How cool is this? Okay. At, um, yeah, um, I've, I, use, um, I use Ableton, which I like. Um, Ableton's cool. And um, uh, we're back. It looks like we're back now. Okay, great stuff. Okay. Look, here we were. Where were we, we say to ourselves. Yes. We were just messing about with this uh, and trying not to crash 
uh, the system again. Right, okay, let's let's not push our luck. Let's disable that one. Let's copy, duplicate that one. Where were we? What were we doing? Yeah, where we get three of things, or with three like this, all you need to do is offset, and then you can double them up because no two are going to be the same, if you see what I mean. So like that. Um, however, actually, a better way of doing it, I've got a better idea. Don't do that, guy. Think, uh, pretend you don't have limitless CPU. Um, because what you probably should do uh, is, okay, turn on the stuff which is going to... Guitar amps use a ton of uh, CPU, or they can do. Okay, let's get rid of that. Uh, okay, we're going down two semitones, and then I'm going to bounce it, and then we can play with it. Okay, that's going to work now takes his life in his hands. Um, I'm going to save it again because bouncing is one of those things. It can go either way because you've no idea how some of these plugins are going to respond to being told to render in place and uh, that doesn't always go well. So we're just going to give it a go and hope for the best and if it disappears, it disappears. No, it's going to be fine. There we go. But, um, Sound your own sound and CPU doesn't get bogged down with FX. Not really needed. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, but you still need the... I still think, you know, the uh, the effects are still useful. Okay, so here we go. So now I'm going to disable the tractor. Now I'm not trying to edit uh, ridiculous plugins in real time. That's all right. Good. Here we go. Now, where were we? You know, you could pretend you just come in now and everything was going great. What? Uh, how's the stream holding up, by the way? I have, I'm not... I, uh, uh, okay. Uh, layer sound, CPU. Is there any different in our chord voicing from the sketching on the piano and the orchestra? Oh, lots of... You, okay, you've got tons of questions going on in there. Um, I better... Uh, apply myself to them at some point but I just wanted to get uh, what I wanted to do before we get to all that is do a, now let me now pan them left and right and see what happens okay okay that's quite nice um, our little uh, Celtic friend is doing its bit now let's move how many bars are we going to Boom. That's where we're going, isn't it? I heard boom there. I'll tidy up the timing in a bit. So it's it's predictably every four bars, isn't it? Boom. No, that wasn't it. I got that wrong. I was miles off. Absolutely miles off. How can you get four bars wrong, you complete idiot guy? Um, okay, look. Let me go back and find and, and duplicate our little friend up here. Turn on grid snapping, get rid of him, get rid of that. Get, go back to the beginning, chop a little bit out there. Hey, presto, and you've got an omelette. There we go. Right. He needs a bit of reverb. Poor boy. Where is he? Where's he gone? Serves me right for not labelling him properly. Hello, mate. You're there, aren't you? K6 Def. Uh, so we're going to call him Kelt. Right. Now we're going to add a little bit of the old reverb. Send. Yes. Which one, though? Oh, goodness. We're going to send it to Spaces. Yep. Yep, that works. Uh, this doesn't work yet, because it's not really very... It's not really very... It was easier to line up, of course. Uh, I could spend hours doing this, and I don't think that's going to be very entertaining viewing, so I'm not going to spend hours doing this. At, um, 
Also, they don't look like they're properly lined up there either. Okay, I just spent two seconds doing this. Yep, that's lined up. Yeah, that sounds all right. Right, turn the click on. Yep, that's in time. Bit early. Ah, close enough for jazz, as they say. That's better. Right, do the same here. And that's not too bad. Do the same here. That's a bit more fl ah, that's a little bit a little bit more flumby. Okay, look, this is not so awful. Not so awful. So we got our little guitar-y thing going down there, and we got this bonkers uh, Celtic um, fiddle going up here. But what else are we doing with all this? At, um, uh, you should write something like the Doom soundtrack. Yeah, I could write something like the Doom. How does the Doom sound? Anyway, I, I was slightly, I, I was looking at a... I was looking at a game, actually, and thinking, actually, this Celtic thing might work quite well for this. This isn't sort of broody and, and all that. Okay, now let's... i tell you what, here we go, look. Um, let us take our instrument track. We're going to show... I'll show you how this works in, in anger now. Instrument template, duplicate. Did I tell it to do it? Duplicate tracks. Here we go. Bong! Right, now we're going to call this one percussion, because we need some... boom. And I'm going to call this perk, and we're going to get some stuff up. i tell you what I discovered the other day, um, is the basic, um, here we go, action strikes, which comes with, is it com native instruments complete? It's not bad. I mean, I, I shouldn't sound surprised, but it's actually quite good. Um, And the ensemble ones, uh, did I like, which one did I like most? Can't remember. Right, so here we go. We've already got a separate output set up, so I can put that one to output two. And let's go and have a look for Master Sessions Ethnic. Where's the ethnic ones? There we go. Ethnic Frame Drum Ensemble. I need some mid ones. Let's put some mids in there. Okay, and put him on output three. So now you see how quick it is to put these things in. So he's on one, two, and three. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is um, NI hits, and this is going to be NI ensemble, and this one's going to be. What was the last one? Oh, yes. Uh, Master Sessions Ethnic, isn't it? Um, so we want the big, ooh, there, that, I rather like this, um, Okay, so when doing drums, um, you don't go overboard making the, the low ones go too quickly. If you do that, it's going to sound rubbish. Uh, it gets really, really messy really quickly. Um, so I tend to be quite sparing. Ooh. That's nice. Okay. 
Now I'm going to go and tidy them all up because I didn't play them as accurately as I might. Um, what was I? Oh, silly old me. I always contrast the drums and then make them feel better later. Uh, what I'm going to use... Did I do this last time I did this? Is um, Drum Editor. Drum Editor is really good um, for... If you've got a drum editor, it doesn't have to just be for um, kit drum and things like that. You can use it for anything you like. And if you use it for things like ethnic drums, what we're going to do here is going to add in a little fluffy bit at the end. So if we can, it's going to go brum. Well, that wasn't very successful, frankly. Now I'm going to, that's what you need to do. Do you see? Do you get, do you get that? Do -do -do. It's almost as though I, you know, I, I knew how to play it, which clearly I don't. At, oh, auto saving, auto saving. Yep. Phew. Okay. <laughs> uh, so now, oh, maybe I can put a bit more in here. So now select the lot. Uh, what am I going to do with this? Is that going to sound rubbish? Have I overdone it? I've overcooked it. Yeah, I have. You don't need all that stuff in there, guy. You can take some out. You'll sound great without. There we go. Right, I now declare it sort of done. Look, I could go on all day doing that, but I'm not going to, because it will be dull. Hang on. I uh, need to balance them up a bit. There's something going on there, which I'm not quite sure about. There, what, what, this drum has a mind of its own. I think I've accidentally played something which is actually a, a phrase. Okay, so here we go. There's the ethnic ones. Oh, that's. The... Okay. Let's turn these. Uh... Come on, you can do it. Ah, I turned it down by mistake. That's better. Okay, look, let's now get some other stuff going. Uh, so we've got um, our guitars going. Doesn't quite line up, does it? Do I mind? Yes, I do, really. What am I going to do about that? Uh, I could do that. Uh, I could just move the whole long, lot along. I could move it on so that it is an eighth later, so that actually it, so the actual little hit is on the... Oh, I see. A stupid guy. Come on. Come on. Pay attention, guy. Everybody out there shout, you've got it. Turn on. Let's hear the whole thing. OK, we will hear the whole thing in a second. Let me. I'm just trying to sort out my own little crisis here. OK. We're... Not very lined up, is it? It's a very, very rhythmically challenged piece of music at the moment. Uh, but this... <clears throat> okay. Incoming snare. Uh, hang on. I did promise you we're going to go back and have a little look at a bit of Albion. And I think uh, now would be an appropriate moment. Um, hello, Albion. Hello, Guy. How are you? Um, I'm fine, thank you very much, indeed. You don't sound anything like Christian or Paul. No, I don't. I have a personality of my own. Jolly good. Um... And Albion does. Albion is a venerable old beast, isn't it? I mean, I bet how many of you got it? Tons and tons and tons. Uh, to, uh, uh, let's, so we got, I've just got a couple of these, the base, you know, the, the old favourites loaned it up here. They, they, okay. OK, 
okay, something like that. But because the window is so big, I couldn't see what I was doing, Your Honour. Okay, enough of that. Um, but you get where that's going. Um, do you know, I can hear a beat in there. We definitely need a lot more percussion in there. Though. Rhythmically challenged or not. What happens if I... Hang on, did they not have bones and things? Do we not remember somewhere back in the day with this, I remembered seeing some Baran thing going on in here. Uh, I've worked with a live Baran player. Absolutely the best. Ah, oh, wonderful experience. Uh, LA, all kinds of bits and pieces. Hang on, let's just find this. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of project names in here, which you shouldn't see. So I'm now moving it to another screen. Yeah, you see, when you sign NDAs, these people take it seriously. And if you do a live stream and their name of their project is on it, go, what? So we don't do that. <laughs> we try not to do that. Hang on, what am I looking for? I'm now, I've got, oh, God blimey, I've lost the plot now. Here, hang on, hang on. Bronze and bones, that's what I was looking for. Here we go. Browns and bones. Oh, no, no, don't do accent sky. It's a really bad idea. Okay. Let's, here we go. Let's load up a baran. Let's see if this... I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't played with their barans before. It might be a work of utter genius. Or not. We'll find out. Uh, instrument two. Okay. That is a baran. Is this a... Tell you what, <laughs> you can hear horses who's That's going to work. It's nothing like, I mean, with the greatest respect to Redrum, uh, real, real Baran player, it, it has a real kind of weirdly melodic feel to it. I worked with a, I wish I could remember his name. He's kind of the, the god of Baran players. And it, and it was oh, unbelievable. It wasn't big bush, bash, bash, wash, that kind of thing. It was much more subtle, but it was really lovely. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's put it on output two. Then we can give it a little bit of love and attention. When will I learn to label things? Can you imagine the state my bedroom was in when I was a kid? Yep, you're absolutely right. That bad. It was that bad. And that's exactly why I should learn to label things in my mixer a bit more. Because if you don't label things in the mixer, you have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. Well, hang on, what's going on? Okay, percussion. Is, is, no, it's the Celtic one. Ah, oh, hang on. Let me take a deep breath, boys and girls. What's going on? Okay, I bounced it, didn't I? So that's why it's not coming out of the thing. That's why it's coming out of there. Right. I tell you what. I'm going to move that down to audio because that's no longer an instrument. Let's put it in there. 
Let's show how organised I can be. I pretend, anyway. Um, right, okay, Celtic Fiddle is now actually the output from that is going to be Boran. If only I could... Oh, I think I might accidentally have spelt it right. God oh, blimey, falls over. Uh, right, let's have a little look. There it is. Now, I think it needs a little something. Uh, needs a little... Opens up endless list of compressors. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, uh, it needs one. I tell you what. Here's one. I actually... It's not what you'd expect. It's from Heaviosity. It's called Punish. Any of you lot up out there have got Punish? It's... <laughs> it, it really is. It is river dance, isn't it? I mean, it's. I wasn't intending this to go all river dance on you. If we turn off the saturation, it's got this quite cool compression and. Too much. No, 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 wrong key. It's not going anywhere, really. <laughs> it's kind of quite fun. Do you like that? I quite like that. I know. Okay, look. So, I mean, what I did say I was going to do was just look at um, Albion. Um, so, I mean, I, you could see how that is the sort of start of something which could turn into something quite all right. Um, what I would be tempting to put a beat with it, I tell you, dropping in, you know, sort of a bit, but that is that, that would then become absolutely pure river dance, wouldn't it? I can hear the, the whole shuffly thing going on and me doing it. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Let's just let's, hear, let's have a little look at Albion because we get asked, we, I get asked, uh, not infrequently, um, what's about Albion? Will I be all right with Albion? Uh, yeah, you'll be all right with Albion. Albion's great. Albion, you know, is uh, a library which has launched a thousand careers. I mean, it's it's done really well uh, for uh, Spitfire. It was because it's it ticks all the boxes and it's a very nicely produced. It's a great sound. Uh, it's a reasonable price. I don't know how much it is. I'm sure somebody out there will tell me. Uh, <laughs> Flatly, my dear, indeed, absolutely. Never veer off and get weird. Oh, needs to veer off and get weird. It does need to veer off and get weird. Uh, you know, it, um, but veering off and getting weird is not always that easy when you're doing live things like this. But you're right, it's, it was all a bit straight. And that, and, but you, the point you make is really good because actually you need to... You need to hear, as you absolutely do, that it's gone a bit. It is a bit straight, but once you've got something there, then you can start messing with it. And um, you know, you, there's all kinds of bits and pieces you could do. What would you do to that to make it? No, don't get distracted, guy. Talk about Albion for a bit. Okay, I will talk about Albion for a bit. Um, the downside of Albion is it's really for sketching because you don't get um, you don't get individual instruments. You get high brass and low brass, and therefore you're relying on um, they're impeccable arrangements, but they are deciding, uh, for example, with your brass. If you're going to have your brass... Uh, where's it gone? Uh, uh, let's just... Oh, I've, hang on, I've gone to the wrong... There we go. That doesn't sound... What's going on?
Yeah, it does. Yes, education discount on Spitfire is good. I mean, what is that? That's high horns and trumpets? Then it's just trumpets up there, obviously. So you don't get much choice. So, I mean, it's very nice. It's well done. Um, but you are stuck with their arrangement. And um, so you can do good stuff. You can do, you know, you can make sound, things sound really nice. Um, but it is always going to sound a bit like, um, um, uh, you know, Albion. But it is lovely, and some some of their stuff, particularly actually, uh, where is it? The but it, with the woodwind, you can hear it's clarinets and an oboe and flutes. Um, so you can do, you could write a very nice piece of music just with Albion, but you are going to be limited in the extent to which you can make it your own. Um, the, some of the percussion in here is absolutely uh, gobsmacking. This is one which is much overused, but really nice. Uh, Easter Island. Um, for start, yeah, I, I, it is, absolutely. It, it, it's the Spitfire Gateway Drug. <laughs> Do you know what? I don't expect their head of marketing had quite that tagline in mind. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I should warn those of you who've got a dental problem, who may have a loose tooth, um, Easter Island is not good for you. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. It does sound like somebody's just dropped an oil tanker down the world's biggest mine and it hits the bottom a thousand feet below do you see what i mean very nice que pensez vous de vsl c'est pas mal no 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 it's very good it's very good vsl is really good it's just different it's completely different um actually um I was talking to, uh, what's the name of the nice guy from VSL not so long ago and talking about doing some stuff with, uh, particularly Special Edition is an absolute fantastic um, uh, bit in investment because you're getting a lot, you're getting exactly the opposite of Albion, which is really detailed articulations at a very good price. Whereas Albion gives you this big swathe, everything sounds lovely, but without the detailed articulations for a very good price. So you get, you get, the two actually would go quite well together. Um, you know, so um, I would uh, absolutely recommend VSL. And the VSL harp is the, still the one I use all the time. And the VSL woodwinds I use all the time. But I have yet to expect, uh, uh, can, uh, what, which one? Uh, sorry, hang on, what's going on here? There's a discussion about what? Uh, oh, BBC Symphony Orchestra. Uh, are you talking BBC Symphony Orchestra here, boys and girls? Uh, okay, look, there's a lot of people asking a lot of questions. Maybe I should answer some questions. Do you think it would be a good idea if I answered questions rather than rabbiting on for a while? I've lost my cursor. That's never a good sign. Okay, right. Okay, there we go. Right. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm now going to look at some questions because questions are good and I'm... Uh, I'm going to be doing this for about another 15 minutes or so. Then I'm going off to... It's a bank holiday. It's a bank, bank holiday. Yeah, so I really should be paying some more attention to my family today. Um, uh, no, the synth stuff, I, I agree with you. I'm not big into the synth stuff um, from Albion. Um, but the actual, the actual basic stuff is really, really good. Uh, and um, it's... Uh, it, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's ensemble patches for woodwind, brass, and strings. Some amazing um, big 
um, sort of percussion and then some quirky stuff as well. Um, so it's it it is very very good. Um, um, but if you're into orchestration and you want to learn to orchestrate, it's not good because you can't separate out the individual instruments. Um, and you'd possibly be better off. I'm looking. I'm starting to look also, and we're doing some stuff with East West and looking at some of the Composer Cloud stuff because that is so affordable. So many people um, get into that that way. Um, so the VSL people, the uh, East West people. Yes, I'm. I'm about to do something on contact because I know that lots of you um, are keen on that. Uh, uh, cine samples. Cine samples are great. Um, the deal with cine samples is. Um, the they've recorded it i think it was on the sony stage in los angeles and it's got the most wonderful ambience it's got this because some of the the spitfire stuff which is um um very much uh the air lintest hall is very ambient um the vsl stuff the old stuff was uh the pre-synchron stage stuff was very very dry but what you want is this sort of Michael Giacchino soundstage sound, and that's exactly what you get from cine samples. The downside with cine samples is you don't get the same uh, range of articulations, that the really detailed articulations that you do with the big libraries from Spitfire or, or VSL. Um, <clears throat> and the uh, interface is a little bit, for me at least, a little bit clunky. I wasn't convinced but you have to reset it up to do your own key switches really to get it flying properly but it is a very good library and if you can manage to get the uh the deal um, um i don't know what the current deal is is somebody said 75 percent off oh blimey which is really good it's an excellent place to start if you get this you know the whole lot so you've got strings woodwind brass and percussion you're good to go it's absolutely good to go and really 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 good um uh, let's have a look at some other questions. Favorite piano? Um, I use Piano Tech if I want something really kind of. I think I've even got to load it up here somewhere. If you want something which sounds kind of quite um, precise and. Um, I use Piano Tech and I use Emotional Piano from Soundarm. Those are the two I like best. Oop, just run over my own cable. Um, uh, what else we got? Uh, orchestral tools. Um, Berlin strings are fantastic, quite expensive, uh, but you get loads of control, and they have wonderful... They, they're the place... I've done a, an, I've done a, a review of Berlin strings, where, where they have... The, the ones which have the dynamic movement in them, like 8DO strings do, I really like, because you, however hard you try, with your little mod wheel... It's not the same as a real player with a real bow playing a real instrument. So Berlin strings are great. I haven't tried their uh, low-cost uh, uh, low cost, um, library yet, but I'm sure I'll get round to it. Um, Strike Force is great. I use that, and you'll see examples of that cropping up from time to time in the stuff I... Um, Strike Force is very stylized. Um, it's not like... Uh, LA Modern Percussion, which is very accurate and a really great sound. Strike Force is the other end, which is kind of it's it's sound design percussion, if you like. But it's but they're both really 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 good. Um, uh, any tips for dealing with the lag on Hollywood strings? I haven't played Hollywood strings for a while. Um, the la I, I will come back to you on that. <laughs> Please don't sing. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry, Max. Too late. Too late. Why don't I use Nuendo? Um, because um, the additional things you get with Nuendo are almost entirely to do with audio post-production for film and television, um, for which it is extremely good. And anybody who comes out giving Pro Tools a serious run for their money has my vote because you know the work, monopoly is never a good thing for end users. And Nuendo is an exceptionally good tool. Um, so um, I don't need it for writing music. There aren't a huge number of advantages other than better surround sound. Um, but uh, when it comes to um, doing, the, doing the business with um, um, proper audio post-production, it's exceptionally good. So highly recommended from that point of view. Uh, yep, okay, I need to go and have some proper uh, uh, look at 
the East West stuff. Um, hello, Romania. Caitlin, nice to hear from you. Um, Mitchell Moore is a very famous name in British Moore. Are you related? Yes. Cliff Mitchell Moore was my father. Uh, he would have been 100 years old this year. Uh, how... Yeah, I really like how VSL spells special edition. Yep, absolutely. VSL special edition is great. Um, what you lack with special edition is big, warm strings. Uh, so you would probably need special edition plus something else. But special edition uh, for the for the for the multi articulations and everything is exceptionally good. Really, really, really good. Um, you could even try special edition plus some of the Spitfire Lab stuff because that's very, very good value. Um, and um, so maybe that's a a, a way to go. At, uh, Oh, look, I can control my camera. We have upgraded our system, you see, for this live thing. And, and I'm, you know, it's holding up, isn't it? So far, the live stream looks all right. At, um, last time I did this, we had problems with dropout, all, you know, which, because I'm on the end, I'm down in the middle of the countryside. And actually, I could show you. I'll show you. Hang on. I am, um, there you go. Look, there's, there's, there is the, the garden. This is on a webcam rather than the posh camera, so it doesn't look quite so good. But, Unfortunately, uh, um, internet connection connectivity in places like this is not great. However, I'm now on a, um, a 4G LTE um, connection with a special directional aerial, and I get 30 megabits up, which is pretty good in the middle of the countryside. Right. Off topic, off topic. Um, uh, let's... Uh, sounds like my stumble rumbling. Yes, stumble rumbling? Did I just say stumble rumbling? Am I mad? Yes, clearly. Absolutely bonkers. Um... Okay, lots of conversation going on here. Uh, Albion is... Uh, no, Albion is from Spitfire. Exactly. Sorry, I should have made that clear. This is Albion 1. They've, they've gone on... Because it's so successful and because people like it so much, um, they've gone on to do... Is it five or six others? Really, really, really good. Exceptionally, exceptionally good. Uh, maybe some wailing breathy. I'm, I'm not even sure what that's about. Yeah, lots of people... Uh, go goth! Yeah, dissonance, distortion, emptiness. That's my vibe. That's my jam. Yeah, you alien oops. Uh, pipes, possibly, misspelt. Um, that's getting too Irish. Yeah. Uh, to, but, to. What's that? What's that? Oh, your lawyers from the Lord of the Rings and I'm being sued. Oh, I'm very, very sorry. Can I just say sorry? Yes. OK. I'm very, very sorry. Is that all right? OK, I won't do it again. Thanks. How did that lawyer get my number? Who knows? Who knows? Anybody's guess how that lawyer got my number. Right. Um. OK. Got to be funky. Okay, there's a lot of conversation going on here. Look, uh, there's a ton. Oh my lord, how many com? There's tons and tons. Trying lots of suggestions. <laughs> Clogs, shield banging. What are you lot like? Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, sorry. Will there uh, here? Um, Ardashir says, will there be any tuition change for upcoming MA students for applications whose first language is not English? I don't know. Um, this is some, there's a lot, uh, we will be, okay. Um, we're going to be doing um, an open day in the next week or so. We'll let you all know when it's going to be, which will be specifically about the um, master's courses. Um, there is a great deal of uncertainty because although we are just cruising along and nothing uh, has Oh, I'm talking to the wrong camera. You wouldn't have thought I spent a life in television, would you? Um, <laughs> um, the the government are potentially uh, relaxing some of the language things, but uh, I'm not sure if that'll apply to um, um, online. I really don't know is the answer. There's a great deal of uncertainty about a lot of aspects of what happens in the autumn, except for the fact that Every other university seems to be in a much worse position than us, and our students are just going along and doing their thing because we are. We've been doing this online thing for a while, so we are not just doing face-to-face -face tuition plus Zoom, Zoom. Oh, quick, put Zoom in, help get me out of jail free. Um, so we are, we're on it. So um, 
how do you become an MA student? Um, you um, you go to our website and you have a look. You get in, You just drop us a line. The first thing you do is you drop us a line and say, uh, you know, um, I'm interested. Talk to me. And then we have a conversation with you about where you, you know, what you're trying to achieve and where you're coming from. And we uh, listen to your music uh, because um, we don't take on people we don't think we can help. Um, and some people need to go away and work some more. And, you know, we need you to be realistic about your what you're hoping to achieve and you know we're always chasing employment for our students that's what we're um we're mainly up for um and look there's there's a number of students on here who are uh, who are on this live stream who are already um ma students who are just joining in i saw tom prince was around earlier so but look <clears throat> the i know a number of you must have lots of ma questions and i can see a number of those bubbling up look Come along to our open day and Tim and I will answer all your questions. And if you are, bur I, I was actually talking to a potential MA student only uh, this morning. Um, and uh, so we're happy to have a chat and to, you know, bring you up to speed. There's lots of information on the website. We have a, the, this website is on its last leg. We have a brand new website, which we are about to launch. So, uh, which will have a lot more information in it. But for the for the time being, go to the current one and you will see what's uh, what's what. Okay, hang on. Challenge for you, blend in some heavy metal guitar. Yes, that that would be a good one. Ah, oh, Robert Rogers, nice to see you. Hello. Aaron, hello. Yeah, there you go. Um, we haven't scheduled it yet, but um, open day is when uh, Tim, the course manager, and I will sit down with you for a couple of hours. We go through everything there is to know about the courses, take your questions, have a chat, get some of the students along. Um, so it's purely MA City. We'll probably do more. We'll, we normally do more than one. We will we'll do one certainly on the uh, YouTube channel and we'll probably do another one um, <clears throat> on a different platform which we use for the MA students, which is easier for you to interact with us in real time. So, you know, uh, it's, yeah. So yeah, we, we will let you know. If you're not, the, an important thing, subscribe to the channel firstly and tick the little notifications bell. Hang on, I've got my little, th where's my thing? Where's my thing? Ah, look, it works. Oh, I do love these little videos when they work. Okay, subscribe, okay. But also make sure you are on our mailing list. Download one of our free things um, because if you're on the mailing list, um, you will get notified about open days and invited to private open days and things like that. Uh, would you consider reinstating tutors on premium courses? What we are looking at doing, Linda, is... Um, should I say this? Yes. Um, what we may well do is um, do feedback sessions for, for fee premium students. So rather than individual one-to-one -one tuition as we were doing before... Um, which is now something which we only can really support with the master's students. We, I think it might be a perfectly good uh, solution for um, people like you who are not really able to go on to the master's course but do want some feedback on your music. So what we might well do is, is for example, is to do um, like almost like a little term. So we'll do over a couple of months where we'll say, right, we're going to do you know feedback every Thursday evening or whatever and you know, first come, first served. Um, so there is that in the pipeline and we will be announcing something along those lines in the not too distant future. So yes, Linda, I hear you and many others have said this. Um, so we are going to bring back a form of tutoring, um, but probably not the, the in the form that it was there before. Um, let's have a look. Love from India. Oh, very good. Uh, yes, thank you for the... Oh, 203 likes and one dislike. Oh, my daughter always gets on and clicks the dislike button. Look, what have I told you? What? Have I told you? Pocket money. No, I don't know who it was. Hang on, should I be stopping this subscribe thing? It's going round and round, isn't it? Yes, it is. There we go. Okay. Look. Uh, is it worth me doing it? I'm nearly fifty. Yeah. Of course. I mean, you know, the only. We frequently get asked this question about um, age. Um, it's, 
age is not the pro age is really not the problem um it's the attitude of mind that can be a problem um in terms of uh if you are able to completely embrace you know new ways of doing things uh, and a new approach to writing music uh you know to evolve your style and things like this um if you're able to acquire new technological approaches to things there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't uh you shouldn't do really well um so uh we have students who are in their 60s and 70s who are starting out and getting work um will they ever get to the point if you start when you're 50 are you likely to get to the point where you're um working full time and earning uh, an absolute ton of money it's probably more challenging because it does the whole thing does take a time to take off um but you have to remember that in a world where everybody works remotely, how old people are is less important than it once was. So um, I really, really, oh, Larry, Larry the pheasant. Yeah, Larry's around. Uh, actually, Larry has got a girlfriend now. And I think where, hang on, I should have put this on the, here we go. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. There is Larry and his girlfriend. They were outside the window about an hour ago. Sort of, go Larry, eh? I think they're nesting somewhere out there in the undergrowth. Maybe I should get a Larry cam. Yes, we should put a Larry cam out so that we can keep up with the Larry. And what? No, no. Just not the best idea you've had today, guy. Okay. I'm 57, uh, second year of a BA fine art. Excellent. Well done, Mr. Drummer 316. Yeah, I mean, look, in many respects... Education is wasted or was wasted on me when I was 21. I mean, I'd have so much more fun now. I really, really would. And I'd get more out of it. I put more into it. I'd get more out of it. Um, you know, so, so yeah, absolutely. Good big band libraries. Um, uh, Chris Hine would be number one. Uh, native instrument stuff is good. Um, and Broadway, Broadway brass are the three. Uh, Larry Cam, lol. I'm going to wind this up in a minute because we've been going an hour and 20 minutes or so. So I need to go off and do other things. Um, but this seems... Okay. There's lots of detailed questions in there, which I'm not going to get time to get round to. I bought an application ticket, whatever they're called, years ago, and have been a few years and taste of weeks, many life changes. Really hope to follow through the MA discussion soon. Good, Matthew. You only buy the application pack once. Um, so even if you bought it right at the beginning, you, that's your ticket to come along to Taste a Week. And we're going to be doing Taste a Week really soon. Um, probably an extended Taste a Week because some of you out there have more time than you did before. Um, so absolutely. Um, yes, completely. So uh, you software right or I don't understand the question, to be honest. Greetings from Ukraine. Greetings to you too. Yeah, any advice on how to start your career as a media composer? Yes, lots, but probably rather more, um, uh, rather more than um, I have time for right now. We will, we should probably do a sort of business of. Well, actually, again, come along to the open day because that what most of the open day is about is about how to start your career. You know, as well as about the careers, it's about how do. Um, so he's got a girlfriend. He does have a girlfriend. Absolutely. Um, Right. Oh, Sibelius or Dorico. Dorico's really good. I have yet to get into it fully. Do more live chats, guy. Okay. Yep. I will do. I'm going to be. Now I've got the technology nailed down a bit more. Uh, and it seems to have held up really well today. Um, I wanted. Yeah. So we definitely will be doing more of this because it's fun, isn't it? And it's nice to be able to answer your questions. Uh, good choir libraries. Um, ATO's uh, choir is absolutely lovely. And. Uh, East West uh, Word Builder is still the best, I think, for, of the World Builder ones. And the, ah, oh, Strezov does some great stuff as well. Storm Choir and the Bulgarian one, whatever it's called, I really, I really think super. Uh, to, look, I, I'd love to go through all your questions, but I am running out of time. I'm so sorry about that. So look, thank you very, very much indeed for coming along. Um, if you haven't subscribed, um, please do so. And... Um, Look out for our open day uh, stuff, which is coming up soon. And if you are just starting out, it's time 
for a word from our sponsor. It's my online course that takes you through every step of the process. How to get going, chord progressions, tune writing, developing and arranging your music, six hours of exclusive video tutorials, a course text packed with tips and a supportive online community. Get more out of your music and sign up today. How to write music is... So there you go. There's, that answers the question of how do you get better at composing. I mean, we've had almost a thousand people sign up for that in the last few months. Uh, um, and so uh, it, it's, there's a money back guarantee if you're... It's not just for people who are beginners. It's for people who need some shape and workflow and to really be able to dissect and pull apart um, your uh, composing process. And uh, so, because a lot of people do, who've been writing music for a while, write intuitively. And then when something goes wrong, it's really hard to work out what's gone wrong. So they chuck the whole thing away and start again. If you understand the workflow and the component parts, it's much easier to fix things and make things right. So give it a go if you are um, uh, interested in becoming a better composer. Uh, I would recommend my own course. <laughs> really, Guy? Yes, there's a shock. Look, uh, it's been great fun. I've really enjoyed uh, your company. Thank you so much indeed for coming along um, today. And um, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, chatting with more of you about more stuff in, as we do more regular ones like this. But anyway, thank you very much indeed. And um, that's all for now. So I'm going to turn off the live stream in a second and say goodnight.